In this video, I wanted to build on what we did in the last video by extending the tests of linear combinations of parameters to slightly more general circumstances. So perhaps our null hypothesis, which we're interested in testing here, might be that let's say beta two is equal to one and beta three is equal to one, as well as let's say beta one being equal to zero. So those three conditions might be our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis is just that any of these isn't true. So any of these violations will result in our null hypothesis being rejected. So how do we go about this? Well, just the same as we did before, we just substitute each of these individual restrictions into the above model. And then what we get is we have that score is equal to alpha plus, well, beta one's gonna disappear here because it's zero, so this first term goes. Then we're gonna have father's education then we're going to have mother's education because both of the coefficients on these variables are being constrained to equal one. And then finally, we just get left our original term beta four times parental income plus epsilon. Okay, so how do I actually estimate this model here? Because the trouble is, if I was to just do a regression of score on father's education, mother's education on, and parental income, then I would get some value for these coefficients, which isn't necessarily equal to one. So how do we proceed here? Well, the answer is what we do is we actually take these two variables over to the left-hand side. So we would take away from score father's education as well as mother's education. And then we'd have a model which is with this as our dependent variable regressed on a constant plus the parental income. So we would just have two independent variables in this circumstance here. And then what we would do is we would just do a standard F test. So the F test we would do here would just be exactly the same form as we had before. So we compare the sum of square residuals for our restricted model, which is this one, with the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model, which is this one up here. And then we divide that through by the sum of square residuals for our unrestricted model. But remember then we need to actually take into account the number of restrictions which we placed on a model, which is three. And then we need to take into account the number of degrees of freedom for our unrestricted model, which in this circumstance would be N. And we've got five parameters. So we've got one for the constant and four for the independent variable. So we'd have N minus five degrees of freedom dividing through uh, the denominator. And under the null hypothesis being true, this should be F distributed with three degrees of freedom for its first input and N minus five degrees of freedom for its second input. So you see that even though we had a slightly more complicated linear combination of parameters, it was exactly the same form as that which we brought up in the last video. Okay, so how do we actually go ahead and test, let's say if we had relationships between the variables in or the coefficients on variables between our model. So perhaps we might have or theory might suggest that beta two should be equal to beta three, and let's say that beta one is equal to beta four. I have no reason to suggest that this would be the case, I'm just using this as an example. So what would be the restricted model which we'd run in this case? Well, we just plug these restrictions into our original model. So we just have that score is equal to alpha plus beta one, and then we would have the combination or sum rather of class attendance and parental income. And then we would have a second term here, which was just the combination of mother's education plus father's education. Because notice that what we're doing here is we are essentially restricting the effect of both of these two sets of variables to be the same. So the regression which we have here would be a regression of score on the sum of class attendance plus parental income, plus then we would also have the sum of mother's education plus father's education. So then this is just a particular nested form of the original model. So we would just get the sum of square residuals for this restricted model, and again, compare it with the sum of square residuals for the unrestricted model, just by using this type of F statistic here except now we would have, instead of having three restrictions, we would just have two restrictions on the top, but the denominator remains the same.
So that concludes our discussion about how we test linear hypotheses um, in sort of nested models. So a nested model means here that we can get to it from placing restrictions on our original model. So we're just talking about particular restricted forms of the original model, and those are what we call nested forms. If we want to test or compare non-nested forms, so that might be comparing this original regression here with a regression which doesn't have parental income in it, and let's say has uh, the distance from school, so D. Notice that there's no way we can get to this other model from placing restrictions on the original model, so it is not a nested form, so we call it an unnested model. In comparing particular model types which are unnested, then we need to use some other criteria to compare them. Um, one of the ways which you can do that is by comparing their level of adjusted R squared or perhaps some other criteria. So you might use the Ikaiki information criteria. And there are various other criteria which you can use to compare non-nested model or unnested models.